be in the series of the extending health span talks. It's gonna, we're gonna talk about the circadian rhythms, which are the body clocks that synchronize all of your body clocks to run at peak performance. Um, and these are the topics, the circadian rhythms, the suprachiasmatic nu nucleus or SCN that synchronizes all your clocks. And then relating that information to when is the best time to exercise, to think, to study, to create, to sleep, eat, and more. So this uh, was recently discovered in 2017, um, received a Nobel Prize, Circadian Rhythms and Light and the Effects of human, on Human Physiology. Every cell in the body has a clock. Um, we're not the only beings that have this all the way down to plants, all animals. They found that sleep, body temperature, digestion, hormones, mental alertness, alertness are just some of the things that are going on at specific times of the day. So since everything in our body runs on circadian clocks, what synchronizes most of these internal clocks? Is it sunlight or moonlight? The answer, it's sunlight. Light reaches the suprachiasmatic nucleus through the eye. And then what results is the, your behavior and your physiology, both interplay. And it's that the suprachiasmatic nucleus that it synchronizes all the body clocks to maintain digestion, hormone production, fat deposition, kidney function, muscle growth recovery. These are all just some of the examples of how these uh, body clocks are being managed. Well, let's just look at digestion in the clock. Um, this is one theory that um, gut bacteria, specific gut bacteria, also have a circadian rhythm, a circadian clock. The gut microbiome are those bacteria that live inside the gut. The research on this, um, they were looking at two comparison studies, two groups. They looked at late night eaters, people that ate late at night and those that ate during the day. And they found that eating late was associated with weight gain. So they feel that eating late is associated with metabolic alterations and changes in microbiota diversity and abundance toward a in more inflammatory pattern. So let's go on and, and figure out what that means, that explanation. Okay, we're gonna talk about the gut microbiome. So which is better to have in your gut? Very little bacteria or an abundance of different kinds of bacteria? The answer is you want an abundance of different kinds of bacteria. That's the term biodiversity. This is what um, the tree of life looks like in your gut. You've got all these different bacteria um, and some of them um, can be good if they are in abundance. Um, some can be bad if the good are destroyed and the, and the bad takes over. You've probably heard of Clostridia difficile. It's um, a GI problem where the gut bacteria, the good gut bacteria get killed off by antibiotics and this Clostridium difficile takes over and causes um, pseudomembranous colitis. You also have firmicutes in the gut, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So that's, I'm gonna look at these two types of gut bacteria, um, their microbiome. The one predominant, pre predominance of bacteria are the Bacteroidetes. Um, they um, have 
people or animals that have a predominance of the Bacteroidetes over Firmicutes have a lower fat mass, they have an improved metabolism, and they have a lower set point. The Firmicutes, in contrast, has a tendency to increase the fat mass. So they'd call them efficient energy harvesters. So very good at grabbing every calorie. And a predominance of this bacteria raises the set point. So increases your tendency to have a greater fat mass. The way I remember Firmicutes, um, yellow, I mean, orange, as in caution, cuties are yummy, but Firmicutes will make you round. So they did obesity studies, looking at people that were night owls, that stayed up late, slept in late versus early birds. Those people that go to bed early and get up early. And they found the obesity rate among night owls is much greater than those morning doves. They also found that skipping breath breakfast is causally linked to obesity. So the theory is that at night, Firmicutes predominates. They're efficient energy harvesters. Whereas the Bacteroidetes around 9 p.m. put on their sleep mass and go to sleep. So eating later on at night increases your risk of being much more efficient in, in, in harvesting all the calories that you might take in. So this is a, a study or showing what happens in the evening. Or when you stop eating about 3 p.m., excuse me, about three hours before going to bed, your body takes this switch where it stops um, storing fat and burning carbs and switches to burning fat. So let's talk about sleep. Now that we're talking about going to bed at least three hours after you've eaten. So the circadian rhythm, light daylight is what hits the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is right here in blue. And um, it's being struck by the light coming in through the optic nerves, cranial nerve two. So that light reaches the suprachiasmatic nucleus and that light um, ends up inhibiting the pineal gland. Remember the pineal gland is the um, endocrine gland that res is responsible for um, melatonin production, which initiates sleep. So light is inhibiting sleep. At nighttime, the pineal gland is uninhibited. So melatonin is released and that initiates sleep. So it's the blue light um, coming in through the eye and it's being picked up and it um, switches on the suprachiasmatic nucleus and it disrupts the circadian rhythms. So people have less sleep, and with less sleep is an associated increase in cortisol production. And remember, when we're talking about cortisol, it um, increases weight gain, increases appetite. It's your stress hormone. Yeah, excess cortisol um, into uh, the logic extent causes Cushing syndrome. And this could be caused by a tumor in the adrenal gland. But people with Cushing syndrome have hypertension, obesity, fatty liver disease, arthritis, depression, and increased incidence of cancers, including breast cancer. 
but cortisol in excessive amounts is not healthy. So the scenario, you would like to lose a few pounds before a friend's wedding. Today's schedule includes weightlifting. So you haven't been greatly efficient with your time and it's already 10 p.m. You haven't made it to the gym. Okay, so now you're only gonna get five hours of sleep if you go to the gym tonight. What should you do? Should you go to the gym or should you go to bed and get a good eight hours of sleep? And the answer is get your sleep. Sleep always comes first. And a clinical research took two groups of participants. They were having the same amount of caloric intake. The first group um, were sleep deprived, having only five and a half hours of sleep. And the second were receiving a full eight and a half hours of sleep. This is making me yawn just thinking about it. So what they found is that people who slept eight and a half hours of sleep in comparison to those who only slept five and a half hours of sleep burned 400 more calories. And again, they're taking in the same number of calories. So it's almost as if you're um, running every night for three miles, you're burning the same number of calories. You're not getting cardiovascular health from it, but at least you're burning 400 more calories at eight and a half hours of sleep in comparison to five and a half. So it turns out that um, melatonin has an inverse relationship to cortisol. So notice how during the night, melatonin as it rises, cortisol levels are low. So having um, blue light, having blue light, sleep deprivation, all of those things um, impair melatonin production and increase cortisol. So you're getting an increase of that chronic stress hormone. So there is actually a sweet spot another J curve to look at. There is, there is a place where enough is, you know, enough is perfect for health, but too much, too much of a good thing. So it turns out the average for majority, vast, vast majority of people is between seven and hour, eight hours of sleep. So this is a graph looking at all cause mortality. People that got too little sleep increased their mortality rate and people who slept too much also increased the mortality rate. The recommendations would be no caffeine after 3 p.m. So that is going to caffeine competes with melatonin's effect on sleep. Avoid blue light, includes television, screens, laptops, phones, three hours before bed. Pretty difficult to do. Um, another option is trying the blue light blocking glasses, which are partially effective. And the other thing is making sure you get outside for at least 30 minutes a day. Usually in the afternoon is best. So you're getting that um, clock synchronization. And then finally getting between seven and eight hours of sleep each night. So in summary, the circadian rhythms, the circadian clock, sleep, and food timing, specifically what we talked about. Remember the um, central pacemaker is the suprachiasmatic nucleus in your brain. And it is synchronizing endocrine, peripheral nervous system, rest activity, feeding time, body temperatures. All those are being um, regulated by that master clock. And then all of these peripheral clocks are all being affected by light. 
So light inhibits the production of melatonin because the suprachiasmatic nucleus isn't there to shut it down. Onset of sleep is delayed without melatonin. And then remember the suprachiasmatic nucleus and light is only one of its duties. The circadian rhythm affects all body systems. This is great to know because um, at 10 a.m. is the best time to take a test. If you were signing up at what point to um, have a interview, a job interview, maybe that would be a great time about the first thing in the morning. Great time in the morning for um, giving a lecture as well. At 2.30, you have the fastest reaction time, 2.30 p.m. At 5 p.m., you have the greatest cardiovascular and muscle strength. So a good time for a workout in the afternoons. 7 p.m., the highest body temperature. And at 9 p.m., melatonin secretion starts naturally if it's not being blocked by blue light. And then right around 2 a.m., the deepest sleep. The other thing we talked about is how chronic stress is caused by, um, or chronic stress um, can be developed by having high levels of cortisol in the blood. So those kind of things would be included with overexertion, sleep deprivation, worry, all of that increased cortisol levels. And all high cortisol levels increases inflammation, all the inflammatory illnesses, including hypertension, cancer, heart disease, depression. So I'd ask you, how many hours of sleep did you get last night? Finally, one of the circadian researchers put uh, together a study covering thousands of people in an app and looking at changing their lifestyle from an erratic lifestyle to more of a circadian lifestyle, showing that people with the erratic lifestyle are shown on the right, having all the um, chronic illnesses, fatty liver disease, type two diabetes, muscle wasting, poor sleep, depression, to going from that to a circadian lifestyle, the drop in body weight, improved heart function, muscle tone, liver function, blood pressure, alertness. So switching from this erratic lifestyle to a circadian lifestyle improves overall health. Any questions, comments, please um, leave a comment.